call you up every night. <laughs> I don't what? believe. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I caught 19 permit. <laughs> what? You know, the Marques is a special, special place because it's it's virgin. I mean, they're never going to build out there. There's some lively stuff going on out here. That's a nice size nice. jack, certainly. Thick. A lot of fun to catch those. Freaking scary. Three. Three now coming in. Look at them on the surface. Oh, dude, this is so cool. I love this. That is a shark. That is the biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo! This is a stunt. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that guy. I thought he said you had okay, to. Relax. Oh, my God. Suffolk Saltwater Experience with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. We're going to have to, uh, that weather's going to change badly. Right now it looks nice, but from what I can tell from the weather on the computer, it may blow 20 to 25. So I'm going to bring some permit rods, shark rods, carbon rods, everything in the, in the uh, uh -huh. arsenal, of course, like always. I think that's going to be good. Downpours, dangerous lightning strikes. Eh. Looks like a good day. I got a couple rods out in the car and uh, stuff like that. I brought that big shark rod. Yeah. Bring, bring that in case uh, we run into Moby Dick. Absolutely. I'm going to bring some um, shark chum, which I have in my freezer. I'll get that ready. Go get that rod. We should be out of here in a few minutes. I think I brought the big cooler. Oh. It's all right, man. The way the good, a good day off starts is with extra food. That's right. And this will be mine. Yeah. You know, since we only have one day and we want to have some fun and get some, get some action, I would suggest, you know, going to an area where not only do we have a plan A, but we have a plan B, C, D, E. Are you thinking, um, thinking uh, what, head out west towards more cases? I think we'll head out west. Maybe we'll try some of that. Um, maybe we'll try a little, little of the wrecks, and then who knows, maybe we'll do a little sharking. That's my favorite. <laughs> that was a pretty awesome trip to the Marquesas, man. That was, that was neat stuff. I like yeah? that. Yeah? I mean, that was a neat experience. We were, you know, we were there at a time of year that I never get down there early in the spring. You know, not having it in my backyard. You have it accessible every right. day from Key West. You can run there every day. What is it, 25 miles from Key West? 25 miles. 25 miles from, from any development. Um, you On top really, of that, it's 25 miles at the end of the road. I mean, this the is the road, southernmost yeah. point. This is as far as you can drive. This is one of the things that saves us from the crowds is it's hard for a lot of people to justify going through Key Largo where there's great fishing then going through Isla Morada where there's great fishing, going through Marathon where there's great fishing, Big Pine, Sugarloaf, on and on. Just they keep here. thinking, man, we're passing over all this great fishing, and we can have a great fishing trip anywhere out here. I'm tired of driving. Let's just put the boat in, you know, to come all the way to Key West, put in at the end of the road, and then go 25 miles out there. So it's a real treat. So you got your crabs all ready? Yeah, man. All right, we're going to make just a short little run, because we definitely want to be prepared before we get to a spot like this. And um, then we're going to troll motor around. And, and we've got some clouds up here that are messing up our visibility. We should be able to see, we, we see, be able to see them. They're going to be right up on the surface. And uh, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and make a little run. The tide's going to be flowing this way, you know, like this. So if we can, what I like to do is troll motor up tide, because the fish are looking directly away from you. Right. And they don't see you coming or hear you coming or anything like that. So what we're going to do is make a little run really, really cool because you can actually use the trolling motor in the bay boat, move around and sight cast these fish just like you do on the flats. That's my favorite part of it. It's not like just anchoring up, chumming, dropping back, catching a fish every now and then. This was, you know, what, what we'll do out there is actively pursue these fish. The, as you catch a fish out of the school, maybe the school moves a little bit, you can move with them. I like to pursue them from down tide up throw the crab over the top of them and bring it down and uh, you can catch some really big ones as, as well as a lot of numbers you know and that that's really cool there's a lot of stuff that goes on out there we only scratch the surface 
Oh, oh my God. Almost out of the water. <laughs> look, look at him on the surface. Look at that. You can see him. Look at him. School of 100 fish right there. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience presented by Yellowfin is brought to you by Hawks K Resort Marina and Villas. All the fun of the Florida Keys in one island resort. Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. By Mercury Marine. Lowrance, makers of HDS, high definition systems. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Sperry Topsider, a passion for the sea. And by Loadmaster, Power Pole, Corrosion Block, Ocean LED, and Tough Line. Yeah, the Marquesas, you know, the fishing is great out there. It's a win win situation for everybody. I mean, you could go out there, and even if the fishing isn't good, or you have mediocre weather, or whatever happens, you're not catching that many fish. It's still, I mean, it's like the equivalent of your Everglades. You go up there, it's beautiful. You see birds, you see, you know, a very wild situation up in, in the Everglades. The same is true for the Marquesas. Absolutely no building out there, no development whatsoever, no roads to get there. In fact, you know, it's very shallow. Only you're limited in, in even the type of boat that you can take out there. So, you know, very few people are going there. Um, with the exception of the fishing guides. Got a little, little chop here, but I think that uh, we'll probably be able to be able to fish in some nicer water. I don't want you to get seasick or anything. Uh, I think I'll be all right. We get out there and you know, you're like, all right, we'll just stop here, get rigged up, and, and we're just gonna drift by. I remember that wind was picking up, so we were just kind of drifting with the wind. And you're like, oh, look out there on the surface, and you might see, see a carpet of, you know, it looks like a football field of a permit right on the surface. I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, whatever. And I look out there, and all of a sudden, like that, and it was just, you know, I mean, I couldn't believe the number of fish there were. And you expect to see a big school, like a hundred fish or something, like right there. Look at them right there. <laughs> yeah, like that, like right there. Hundred uh, fish. You're on the wrong side of them, though. This is where the local knowledge plays a little bit of advantage. Crab went right through him with that. Oh, he just ate it right there on the surface. I'm on. I'm on. I'm gonna let you get on. I can't because he took off. Go to, ah! go, go to the right. Go to the right. Go to the right. <laughs> God, that didn't take long. Take long. <laughs> I didn't bring you out here for anything but to catch fish. All right, Rich. There's another school right out here. God bless. I call you up every night. <laughs> I don't what? believe. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I caught 19 permit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, right out in here. This is the most important factor in any of the. You have to worry about. Fishing. Oh, I see them all out there. Yes. I see a big okay, carpet of them. Oh, those might be cooties there. No, that's, that's a permit. Uh, the most important part of any of this kind of fishing. Here, look, right here. Oh, I got him! I got him! I got a big wad. Now just let it be a live crab. You don't need to be. be He's okay, coming over to it. Right he there. ate it. They ate it. You know what? We're gonna catch these on fly, man. You're on. Hello. Oh, oh my God! Almost out of the water. <laughs> look, look at him right on the surface. Look at that. You can see him. Look on at him. School of a hundred fish right there. Look at that. Right at the look boat. At this. My God! You've got a fish right here. Look at that. Come on, get him. Oh, you just lost something. I think I'm moving to Key West. Oh man! Now he realizes he's hooked. Now he's figured it out. Now this is all the pre-spawn behavior here. See how? Look! Look! How, how many times do you see them biting at the other one's tail when they're hooked and stuff and hanging around? I told you the other day I went to net one and I almost netted because, you know, we're, we're right there and the other fish won't leave him alone. This is incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. I guess I'll incredible. have to do the netting myself here. I mean, it was so exciting for me when we first got there to, you know, get on that big school permit. You know, we threw in there, we hooked a double header. I mean, it was so wild. wild. I mean, Literally, there was a football field of fish there. And when we threw in there and I hooked that first one, I, I think the same time you hooked one or something, but I remember my fish shooting across the top of the water and I remember about eight other fish right on top of them. I mean, they were following them. I mean, I couldn't believe that. I mean, if we had more rods, we could have hooked more fish. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't throw three or four more out. Okay, we got them together. Oh, look at that, look at that. There was a whole bunch more though. I don't know if that was somebody chasing them or what. This is incredible, Tom. Incredible, man. All we'll my, all my years of fishing, I've never seen anything like that. Okay, the line's touched. You gotta be so careful about that. All right. That's how I used to do it when I was trout fishing. I just grab my, 
Oh, look oh. at the mine got cut by a shark, Not huh? today, though. That was an old wound, huh? Not today, though. These are survivors, man. <laughs> look at that, man. Not today. That's at, look at, least, that. at least a week old. Look at that. Look at that, Tom. Talk about a uh, lucky fish. Man, and I would say that that shark that tried to eat him would be a lemon shark, probably about 40 pounds. You know, looking at the bite mark on him. Look at that. His mouth is that wide, and he came up and caught him a little bit, but didn't didn't get to eat him. Oh, that was probably a, 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 a week ago. You figure he'd been hooked before? No. Look at look at look at you see the teeth marks, the individual oh, teeth can. marks. You can actually see the individual teeth marks. Man. I'll tell you what, this is a this is a place where. These fish have to be survivors. That little area is the epicenter of permit fishing. I mean, it, it all happens there. You can see every situation that a permit lives in is right out there. I mean, it is a place for the master's degree of permit education because, I mean, it's like anything that a permit does, they do out there. Let's see if we can make these guys go back and see if they can survive another <laughs> shark attack. Oh, that's awesome, man. You ready? Yep. Mine's going, Woo! oh, twins. <laughs> Who's going to be the first to get the crab on? I'm going to get a crab on first. I'm getting a crab on first. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome, Tom. You are unbelievably lucky to have this in your backyard. We had 10 bull sharks around us. I mean, everywhere we looked, there's one, there's one. OK, here's the one right here. This guy's going to come in. So many different manufacturers and line types on the market, a lot of anglers get confused about how to make the best line choice for their style of fishing. I'm going to go over four different types of lines, show you how they can help your fishing no matter what you're doing. First, you have standard monofilament. Standard monofilament has a stretch of about 20%, so that means if you put 100 yards of line on there, when you go to set the hook, your line's going to stretch about 20 feet. Monofilament is strong, it's clear, and it knots well. It's a great choice for spinning or conventional lines in almost every application. You also have fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon has the same light reflective capabilities as water. It doesn't mean that it's completely invisible to fish underwater, but what it does mean is that there's no shine coming off your line when it's in the water. It's extremely expensive, so you only want to use it as a leader material to help disguise your line from the fish. Another type of line is IGFA tournament line. This line is, is designed to break within the IGFA regulations for eight pound test. So if you're an angler that wants to catch a fish on eight pound or submit it for a world record, definitely go and use the line that says IGFA because it's gonna break below the line on the label. And the last kind of line we're gonna talk about is braided line. Braided line has near zero stretch for perfect hook sets every time. It's incredibly thin and it's gonna improve your casting by 20 or 30% the first time you put it on the spool. It has incredible strength for its diameter and you can get away with fishing 20 pound line that is the same diameter as eight pound monofilament. There's no one line that's gonna be perfect for all types of fishing. As you can see right here, we have four different types of lines. I'll use all of these in my fishing and sometimes combinations of them. I got him, I got him too. Really? Yep. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, where are you? <laughs> Watch your line now. The only way we'll lose them is... Tom, that is an, a lot of fish. Look at that school of cooters right there. Jeez. That is so many permit. It was awesome. I mean, we were laying on this doubleheader going crazy, and then, and then at, while we're doing that, we're drifting off of your, your, your spot there. And I mean, we landed those two. I was all excited, and you're like, eh, we'll go around and do it again and you just keep drifting around. They might have moved a little bit. Eventually you find them and you're like, oh, there they are. And we threw right over there and caught another one. I mean, it's just so cool, so unique for me to be able to see that, that opportunity and, and, and catch them like that. I got mine ready back here, so I'm just gonna go ahead. And... Can you grab him or you need the net at all? I got him, he's, he's pretty small in comparison. <sighs> That's so cool, man. Whew. You got yours under control there, man? Yes, I do. <laughs> God, look at the length of this dorsal fin on this fish. This dorsal fin is just outstandingly that long. Is long. Nice, man. Let's see you, buddy. <laughs> you like that? That's incredible, man. 
that was fun. And then when we moved upon the flats, I mean, you know, we saw numerous permit, you know, up there, schools. Then we also saw, um, you know, while we're looking for those, uh, you know, I started throwing, you're like, you see that mud in there? Let's throw some jigs. And I started throwing that jig. And every cast, I mean, I was hooking something different. And what, what was cool to me is, is that variety. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, we are in a school of Jack Cravals and we cut a bunch of those. The exact same hole we had, but Jack Cravals, Yellow Jacks, Permit, Blue Runners. I mean, every cast I pulled out, you know, a pompano. I would have never right, thought there'd be a pompano right, right. in there. I mean, the same day we caught a permit and a pompano. <laughs> now, not a lot of people are going to let this guy go because this is uh, prime table fare, but we will. You can see that the dorsal fin is short and stubby, yeah. and he also doesn't have the markings like a like a permit. On any day out there, especially that time of the year, you can catch quite a number of different species, and you know a lot of them have big teeth. Like the like the barracuda or the kingfish or the sharks. Uh oh, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? You look for the permit. What do you got? Shark? Yeah. I'm gonna leave that right out there. That was Mr. Big right there. <laughs> this is my idea, shark fishing, man. This is my idea, fishing. <laughs> we got so many different things going on, you can't even keep it straight. The bull sharks will come in that time of the year. And Bunch that is the baddest shark around. I mean, you know, they're all tough, but a bull shark. They look mean. I mean, they got that, that arched back and those, you know, that big head. And, and, and they're heavy, intimidating. heavy for their size, you know, big bodied fish. Three now coming in. Look at them on the surface. Oh, dude, this is so cool. I love this. I'd never seen that many bull sharks. I mean, when we got up on that plot, we had 10 bull sharks around us. I mean, everywhere we looked, there's yep. one, there's one. I mean, Remember we drug that, that cuda carcass across mm -hmm. there while we were fishing for permit and jacks and all that other stuff. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, here comes the sharks. Here's another one coming in for yours. Coming directly at yours. Don't move it. You just ate me, buddy. Got him? You just ate it. Yes, sir. I'm gonna let him run with it for a while. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, there, look at him jumping. Look at him jumping. Oh, yeah, look at him jumping. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. Oh, my. I've never seen a big bull shark like this jumping, man. That's a pretty good size one, huh? That's a decent size one. Not the moose that we're after, but he's the right species. Definitely a bully, I think, huh? Bully boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience presented by Yellowfin is brought to you by Yellowfin, only at a Yellowfin. Fin Ore, legendary tackle since 1933. The Florida Keys in Key West, come as you are. Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Motor Guide, never stop. By Sirius Marine Weather, satellite weather direct to your boat. And by Under Armour, King Sailfish Mounts, Stable, Scott Fly Rods, and Plano. The coolest thing for me was to catch all that variety in one location and then cap it off with that big bull shark. I mean, yeah. you know, we were seeing in that one little hole, we had caught permit, jacks, you know, all, all this other stuff. And then, you know, while we're doing that, we had that coot out and, and the shark started coming in. And then we cap it off with about a hundred and something pound bull shark. I mean, right. just, that was an awesome day. I mean, really exciting. And, you know, yeah. to, to me, it was, it was different. I was in that, that unique environment. It was a fun day and it was a special place, man. All right, I got to get my gear on. Hang on one second. <laughs> get suited up for battle. I'm anxious. Let's throw that out there in case we want to get a double. I'm anxious to see you wrestle this guy. Well, <laughs> I really enjoy wrestling him. <laughs> that's the right species. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. That's your perfect uh, point fish for that tournament, that's isn't it? about right there. About five feet long. Oh, he's at least that. And certainly legal, and that's the right high point species. He right? doesn't really take. I'll tell you what, it's not the kind of fish you want to get in the water with. Out of the way. I'm 
want me to grab something? No, you just stay out of the way. Look at that guy. Yeah, that's, that's probably far enough. It's a business end down there. You can't get him in because there's pectoral. You caught around his pectoral. Hey. You got around his mouth? Yep. You got around the corner. Oh, nice. Got it. That was intense, man. <laughs> I love that, man, I swear. <laughs> to be able to harness him and keep him under control for a moment, take the hook out, I'll tell you what, man, that is, that is really one of the coolest things. That was a big, big, uh... Well, that big, one wasn't big, even very big, you know? But big enough, big as you. I'll tell awesome. you what, when I hook into him, <laughs> he you took know? off like a maniac, man. I'm ready to catch Jumped another one. twice, I mean, yeah, let's do it. They're still swimming around. Thank you.